<laughs> hey guys, welcome to the first journey of the season. Uh, today we're actually out on the Sterling Ditch Trail, Sterling Mine Ditch Trail. This is going to be a complete 15 mile pack in, turn around, pack back out. And at the end of the trail, there's a nice surprise waiting for us. So, welcome to the first journey and let's have fun. This is what life is. Unperverted, untouched by man. This is awesome. First marker. A little bit of an update. We're about three and a half, four miles into the trail. Uh, having a beautiful day right now. Just look at that view. You know, walking down the trail, thinking about mindset and the mindset of survival. And there are a lot of different ideas and ideology out there when it comes to the ideas of survival. And I, I compose my logic based on the best aspects of each one. So you've got the typical prepper. You've got the, you've got the tactical... You've got yourself the backpacker survivalist. Um, then you've got yourself the bushcraftman. And then you've got yourself a backpacker, just a trail hiker, kind of like what we're doing today. Today is just a trail hike. If you study the different aspects of what people's ideology is, you can kind of develop your own little hybrid system of what you got, taking the best aspects of each one. I don't particularly think that uh, one of them is superior to the other. It is definitely a difference of preference, um, personal experience, how you are as a person. There are some of those out there, like the people I've encountered on this trail today, that are runners. I'm not a runner. I think that the only two reasons why you should be running is if a bear's chasing you or a woman's offering you a cup of coffee. <clears throat> but if you take a look at the different aspects of each of them, they each have their own unique and remarkable abilities. Um, the tactical guy, I'm not too particularly fond of. I think that they develop the wrong mentality and they rely too heavily on tactical gear. The tactical gear is actually a really cool thing, but <laughs> it's not everything. You gotta have knowledge, you gotta have experience. You gotta have the tactical pack, the tactical trauma kits and the tactical this and that, night vision and all military personnel gear. But they believe and they rely too heavily on the tactical gear. Uh, they pack their packs with a minimal amount of calories and water and they rely on technology and gear other than knowledge and experience. The survivalist. The survivalist is that guy that focuses all of his attention on bushcraft and tactical. So it's a little bit of a crossbreed between the two. They've got some bushcrafting skills and they, they have a wide range, a wide range of knowledge based on a variety of different things. So chances are the survivalist style guy, the extreme prepper, he will be able to sustain life and endure for a long period of time based on the measure of how many preps and how how well they studied on their knowledge the bushcraft the bushcraft man is by far probably the most capable out of all of them just because he relies completely on the he relies completely on his knowledge of the land and his ability with tools so this is the guy that you can send in the middle of the forest and he can build you a shopping mall with nothing but a pocket knife and a multi-tool. <clears throat> These guys right here are the ones who will be able to endure in the wilderness longer than others. 
Uh, and then the final one, you've got the traditional backpacker. The traditional backpacker goes with extreme lightweight equipment, uh, focuses completely on their ability to be able to walk for very long distances, but are heavily dependent on resupply points in between trips. <clears throat> if you were to take the best features of each one of these groups and combine it into a hybrid theory of what you can do for yourself, then you would have my mentality. I take the best aspects of each, each one of those mindsets and I combine them into a kit that would be able to sustain for me. I do enjoy some of the tactical equipment that they have, but I do not like the outward look of tactical. Uh, I don't believe that presents the correct image of who I am, so that's just not me. I am really big into the outdoors. I do everything from geocaching to trail hikes, as you can see here, and just being in the woods. <clears throat> Getting the knowledge of a well-versed region of information is really good to have. So having the survivalist's mentality, being able to adapt into the knowledge, being able to figure out, well, what can I use for toilet paper? What items will have the best for long-term longevity? Um, and so on. The bushcraft men, that's the one where I have the most fun with. Being able to grab just a standard pocket knife and walk into the woods and be able to whittle anything, that's a great skill to know. Learning how to do primitive fire is really good to have. Ah, look at that. That's awesome. This is what you got to look forward to to go out and test your equipment. Today is a minor test of my equipment, my abilities, and my concept of being able to endure. Today is a 30 mile hike there and back. The starting of the trail was really good. Uh, the incline of this trail is actually very mild. I haven't even felt like I've been doing a high trail. But I am increasing in altitude quite a bit, so it's quite enjoyable. Wow. Look at that. Ooh. Oh, yeah. It's gorgeous. And it's a gorgeous day, too. It's not too hot. Hopefully it doesn't start raining. It's been raining for the last couple of weeks. Right. It's beautiful. The bushcraft man definitely is the most knowledgeable when it comes to the outdoor life, plants, animals, what you can do, what you can't do, being able to devise snares and traps, um, knowing the locations of the land, and that's all about experience in the land. You're not ever going to get enough experience reading a book. You need to get out and practice your materials. So today is a practice day. <clears throat> I chose this trail today because it's got a very long historic history of my area. Um, what you see down in here, this ditch, this was a hand carved ditch that runs the entire trail about 15, 20 miles or so. And at the end of the trail is our goal. Our goal is to see an old mining tunnel. This tunnel is said to be 150 feet long and it is the prize at the end of the trail. So we will persevere and we will get there. All right, checking in a minute. Yeah. On the trail around. Look at that. <clears throat> now the backpacker. The backpacker is very, is a lightweight traveler, uh, believes to have the lightest amount of equipment 
and being able to carry the lightest load. Understanding a backpacker's discipline will actually help you out quite a bit when it comes to the load that you're carrying in your pack, not overburdening yourself for things that is really unnecessary. Today, my pack is actually much larger than I anticipated it to be. It's probably sitting right around the 30 to 40 range, but I can carry it and I'm having no issues. Uh, this trail right here has no natural water sources available, so I had to make sure that I carried enough water. So I've got roughly five liters of water from the starting point, um, a three liter and a two liter hydration bladder. Makes it easy for myself and my dog to be able to have water during the day. Uh, I carry that little collapsible cup you've seen before for my dog to be able to drink from. And that right there is a fifth and bonus to have. A canine. As you guys can see in the camera range, my dog Chloe, she's a half German Shepherd, half Alaskan Husky mix. One of the smartest dumb dogs you'll ever meet. What I mean by that is she's my outdoor companion. She goes with me everywhere I go into the woods. Um, there's been cases in the past where she protected she protected a group of children that we were walking down to the river and she alerted me to a rattlesnake in the trail. Having a dog around can help you out tremendously just because they're able to hunt, they're able to do things, but best of all, they're a defense tool. They are a scouting tool. I mean, a dog is gonna be able to find water faster than you are. Dog's gonna be able to alert you to dangers and smells. Speaking of dog. Hey. But they can be a headache at times when they run off. Uh, they're just like two-year-olds. You gotta consistently tell them where to go and how far to go. But having a good canine with you is a very smart tool to have. Well guys, tell me what you think about the mentality. Can you take all four aspects of those mentalities and create yourself a hybrid version of each? Uh, if you can do that, you can definitely have a much better chances to obtain the goal that you're wanting. Um, the mall ninja with his quick ready deployment of a 50 bullet hole trauma kit can be useful i think i'm not going to be really engaging in anyone to where i'm going to get 50 gunshots but hey you never know <clears throat> the survivalist are you going to learn everything you possibly can about man-made remedies shelf life preservation Long-term survivability inside of a 4x4 bunker underground for 22 years? That's not for me. The bushcraft men. The bushcraft man who can go out and be able to survive and endure in the majority of circumstances. Um, or the, de the dedicated day hiker. The one that will go out and track for miles upon miles with the lightest equipment and depending on man-made resupply points tell me what you think in the comments below if you like the video give me a thumbs up like comment and subscribe thank you getting closer end of the trail is five miles ahead not only that but once you discovered that the Varden were in danger why didn't Islanzadi rouse the elves to fight are we not allies he has roused the elves the forest echoes with the ring of hammers, the tramp of armored boots, and the... Break time. Look at that view. Well, guys, here it is. Here's the tunnel.
Oh. Little uh, lackluster. Tell you the truth. <laughs> I walked 13 miles to see this. Monkly. It's actually pretty cool. Creepy as shit, but pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> 